Hey everyone, it's Bob Perkins with AAISP's Inside Sales Studio, bringing you a special interview today. I'm here with Josh Tillman, uh, who's with uh, Dial Source. Josh, welcome to the show today. Thanks, Bob. Absolute pleasure being here today. Um, you know, we're going to talk about a topic that's emerging. It's gaining uh, quite a bit of interest in the sales world, and it has partially to do with artificial intelligence. But more importantly, as Josh will tell you about in a minute, actionable intelligence. You know, our industry has been surrounded for years with technology, with CRMs. But with that, lots of things that might help the leader a little bit, like a CRM, but has a lot of cost and weight that it puts on the sales rep because they've got to enter all this stuff and it takes them away from selling. Well, today, Josh, you're going to talk to the viewers about how to take some of that data and the things that we've been doing from a technology standpoint, harnessing them, reducing the workload in a lot of instances, but improving the selling efficiency and also serving our customers. So it's great to have you. Uh, before we jump right in though, Josh, why don't you talk to the viewers about uh, yourself a little bit and uh, dial source. Absolutely. And again, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I would first classify myself as a professional nerd. Uh, we love to geek out over analytics, automation, technology, and the way in which these stacks uh, work together to provide a more seamless engagement, both for selling and servicing. Uh, I founded DialSource with a few friends of mine more than a decade ago uh, out of a college paper from the University of California. And we mm -hmm. took that paper and built some initial prototypes on the technology. And before we knew it, uh, we had a listing on the Salesforce App Exchange wow. uh, in the mid late 2000s. And uh, our technology was very unique in the fact that we designed our own hardware and our own software from the ground up together mm -hmm. and wrote the technology to be native in the programming languages of both Salesforce and Microsoft. And this allowed us to really focus on solving a different type of problem, controlling the stack end to end together. Uh, mm -hmm. We also had the luxury and the ignorance, I should say, <laughs> while being a, a bunch of young guys and gals um, tackling very difficult problems. And before we ever had any funding and before we ever really categorized ourselves as a business, uh, we were a bunch of nerds solving complicated problems um, and really we had the luxury of solving these problems going into some of the largest enterprise organizations over the years and really understanding what are the ways in which these organizations want to use technology and how can they make more intelligent and actionable decisions in improving the quality of their sales and service while reducing the amount of labor the reps need to do while increasing output and, and as you mentioned Sorry, Josh, I got to interject here on you, something you just said on that note of reducing the time it takes a, a sales rep to kind of get through all of the processes, you know, update the fields, check the boxes. Yes. We hear that through our research at the association that it's killing them. And yes. some, some research I've seen says 60% of the time is doing that. Sure. Uh, and, and that's if they're actually doing it. Another part of the problem is are they actually even doing it? Yes. And, and, and so this brings up an interesting compliance discussion around uh, uh, the economics of perfect information. If our information is half accurate, I believe it's completely inaccurate. Yeah. And so it's not only that it's labor intensive, but we need the reps logging the right actions and activities at the end of successful and unsuccessful call resolutions. So as an organization, we can make more intelligent and timely uh, resolution to these. And this is really where our technology can help come in uh, by saving the time and using deep automation and deep analytics to understand what a rep is saying, what they're doing, how they're selling and servicing, and what processes and procedures are required at the end of the conversation to not only get the product to the client or resolve that case that they're calling in, but make sure that it's logged into CRM so management can actually make those intelligent decisions, help provide a better quality of service, and even training to the reps. So, so there's you said a couple of things there, and I want, I want to sort of expand on that. You said one piece of it is improving the time it takes, the effort it takes by sales reps to make sure this stuff gets in there. Sure. And I know you're a proponent of 
automating as much of that as possible. But you said something else around using that data yes. through some type of actionable intelligence. Yes. Yes. So, for example, we might want to know how many times did a BDR uh, place an outbound call to somebody who downloaded a white paper or saw an engagement at the conference? Uh, and how long did we have to speak to them and how many times before indicated interest occurred? Perhaps that person called us back in after consuming some content. And we want to be able to tie all of those engagements and the outcome of those engagements the processes at the end of those calls to streamline the intelligence and the action so we are better servicing and providing what the intelligent consumer is wishing from us instead of taking a guess or taking random product to solve problem. <laughs> taking a guess. So many salespeople take lots of guesses. So paint us a picture. The old way of kind of doing this you know, outreach is selling this prospecting and then paint a little bit of vision for the future, if you will. Sure. How's it going to sure. change? Well, well, fundamentally, I don't believe that dials equal dollars. I believe that conversations yeah. create relationships and relationships create revenue opportunity. And from that revenue opportunity, we continue to sell and service product to our clients. So it's not just this shotgun approach of let's call the most amount of people in the least amount of time. It's let's use this actionable intelligence to provide a better quality of service to the end user. And so there's this catch 22 between uh, where technology has been brought into CRM by management to uh, create more data points by the reps for the executive teams. And that reps don't necessarily understand why or how the importance of that pertains to them in the organization. Mm -hmm. So I believe that there's a shift in technology currently where deep automation and deep analytics are going to provide both. More actionable and intelligence from the end of the engagement by the rep, saving time and increasing yeah. output, but yeah. also by doing all the right things accurately, management's gonna have a better opportunity to make more informed and accurate decisions, thus also increasing the quality of experience in both sales and service, which we know are tied together to continue to provide additional revenue to the organization and build lifelong branding and clients. And, and, and there's another piece that you said a minute ago, which I couldn't agree more. You said, you know, quantity of uh, the dials in and of themselves don't you know, bring in business relationships do so. If I'm hearing you correctly, Josh, you're saying, one, there's going to be less guesswork, more um, AI behind who and when and the what of the, the contact and the method. And the why. That, and the why. And there's still that human component that we got to have. Correct. And, but, and more of it, maybe. Yes, I would say that you cannot underestimate the importance of human intervention in uh, the capacity of building and servicing human relationships. Uh, whether you're training a rep on CRM uh, or you're training them on sales, you're not calling the opportunity, that's the dollars. You're calling the contact that is the relationship that is making the decision on how to spend their dollars. And so we want to be able to maximize the intelligence made by the end user mitigating the labor intensive activities necessary at the end of the interaction of creating that intelligence. And so by managing them both through a new way in which technology, CRM, database, telephony are interacting in real time, we have the unique ability here to increase output, reduce costs, and do more in less time with less energy. And that is a fundamental shift in technology and yeah. the way in which people adopt technology, which as we all know, is a whole nother problem, perhaps for a whole nother day's discussion yeah. on the adoption of technology. Yeah. But that's another thing that we want to focus on as well, because if the sales and service reps do not adopt the technology, the technology in and of itself is worthless. You know, every I think every sales leader out there watching this would nod their head to say, if I said, hey, wouldn't you like your reps spending more time, right, exponentially more time in an engagement, in a relationship, in a discussion about needs and discovery? Um, that's great. Um, la last uh, question or point I'd like you to talk about today, Josh, would be the future of this whole AI thing, specifically in the sales world. What, what's going to be cool that's going to happen out there or unique that's going to happen? Um, that might affect the selling profession? 
Uh, it's an interesting question that you ask because I think the, the first thing to do uh, is determining what is the definition of AI, right? And this is a hard thing in and of itself where there's a lot of market jargon and a lot of buzzwords associated to it. Uh, yeah. But I think the ability to make actionable and intelligent decisions that increase the quality of experience by the buyer is really going to drive the way in which AI is defined and the way in which it's really built in applicable scenarios. And I think that's gonna be the key here. And as it pertains to us, I think that we're doing quite a lot of this as it relates to not only outbound, like we're talking in sales, but inbound as well to identify that we know Bob is the primary contact uh, uh, at the organization that's calling in that has an open revenue opportunity with a related technical case and getting that call to the right person with the right skills in real time by blending both the IVR, the PBX and CRM and the AI will allow us to do better in less time and track the revenue and increase quality of experience all in real time together. And I think what we'll start to see is more actionable and measurable results yeah. from the AI in the coming months of development. Listen, I, I love that you put the buyer first in that equation. You didn't talk about it'll help the sales rep be more efficient, it'll help the manager have more insight, which are all good. You put the buyer first, that's fantastic. Josh, I, I, I believe if we concentrate on the buyer then, yeah. and we have good product, that the rest will fall into place at an increased rate. And so I think to your point, Bob, a lot of organizations misunderstand the importance of the relationship yeah. and miss the target altogether and focus on the buyer, why they're having a problem, solve the problem for them, and the rest will fall in place. Couldn't agree uh, with you any more than that. Now, Josh, we're going to see you next week. You're I'm so excited. Digital Sales World in San Francisco on February 1st. You'll be speaking on yes. main stage. Uh, let us uh, talk to us just for a minute about uh, the topic and what, what uh, people could expect to hear from you. Sure. And we're going to definitely be expanding on the topic by sharing use cases from some of the most prestigious organizations on enterprise to EDU to professional sports and just in the backyard of the presentation in technology. And we're really going to drive in on use cases on how we're providing this actionable intelligence in sales and service all across the board. And we really want to uh, 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 discuss use cases and discuss customer success on how they're making faster, more informed decisions while reducing costs within the organization and improving the customer engagement and the, the scores associated with who's engaging with them and why. And so we really look at this as a, a, a wonderful opportunity to share the success that our clients have enjoyed so we can share it in other related industry segments. Well, look, that's fantastic. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank you for sharing your knowledge with the viewers today. This is exciting stuff, man. We're, we're headed down a path in sales, which is going to be really exciting over the next few years. Uh, thank you also for supporting the, the association. We have a great community of curious, eager leaders out there. I hope you uh, enjoyed this episode of Inside Sales Studio. Josh, if anyone viewing this wants to learn more about you or, or Dowsworth or even just uh, get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to do that? They can reach me by my personal email address, joshua at dialsource.com. I welcome the opportunity. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm a professional geek uh, or nerd first and foremost. So I'm always happy to have a conversation around data, intelligence, analytics, hardware, software. Uh, I encourage the opportunity. I want to thank you for uh, uh, welcoming Dialsource into the community. Uh, and I can't wait till the event next week. All right. Well, thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Josh. We'll see you next week in San Fran. Until then, everyone, good selling. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.